Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah and this week we have part two of our spring preview including the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, so if you missed part one that was last week and you can scroll back in our feed. Um, there I talk about a lot of the new products that we're going to be offering both at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival um, which is coming up in the first weekend in May as well as further on in the spring we'll be listing some of those items online as well. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about Maryland. Um, it's the biggest show that we do every year. And this year it is the 4th and 5th of May. Again, that's the first weekend. Um, down at the Howard County Fairgrounds in West Friendship, Maryland. Um, I believe there's a $5 entry fee. Um, so it's not very expensive, but you do have to get tickets. You can get advanced tickets online um, at sheepandwool.org. Um, and there they have also the, um, the list of activities, the speakers, um, the workshops, which are probably largely sold out at this point, um, but you can see who's giving workshops, and of course the list of vendors. Um, and we're going to be vending in the main hall in booth D15. Um, so come find us there. It'll be nice and enclosed just in case it's raining or something like that. Um, I also wanted to spotlight some other vendors, and I'll talk about those folks in just a moment. Um, but first, I wanted to touch on a couple of things that we're going to be offering that I didn't really get to show you last week. So last week, I showed you kind of a prototype of the new um, project bags that we have. And this week, the bags are finished. Um, my sewist finished making them, and I got to pick them up, and so I can show you the colors that we have. So here is the finished bag. This is the smaller size. And as I mentioned last week, we're going to be offering these in solid colors. Um, you know, I wanted to keep it gender neutral, not too cute. Um, there's there's tons of really cute project bags out on the market, and so if that's your if that's your game, if you want something with sparkle or unicorns or kittens or something on it, you know, you've got tons of choice out there. So I wanted to do something a little bit different, and um, yeah, I'm really pleased with the way these turned out. Again, there's no zipper. So they just open using this mechanism that springs back on itself. So it's a great travel bag um, for that reason, because your stuff doesn't fall out. Um, so, so I like that aspect of it. In here I have two balls of sock yarn. Um, one large ball that I cut in half because I like to do my socks simultaneously. And my pattern my little notions pouch. So I've got everything I need. And then it comes with this wrist strap, which is removable. But if you like to stand up and knit, um, I do this sometimes, especially if I'm at an event, um, or if I'm waiting a long time in the doctor's office and I get tired of sitting down, I like to stand up and knit. So you can stand up and knit right out of this. Just take out your knitting and use your wrist strap um, to hold onto it while you knit. Um, of course, this wrist strap can also be used to just carry the bag or um, to attach it. It does have a removable fob, so you could use it to attach the bag to another bag or inside of another bag. Um, if you have a larger tote bag or something, you don't want this to fall out, you can loop it through that handle. So that's the small size. It is fairly compact, but again, I wanted these you know, to really be good for travel and be lightweight. They fold down really flat when you're not when you don't have anything in them. So they'd be great to roll up and bring with you on a trip. And then when you're ready to head to the beach or you know out on a hike or wherever you're going, out to the bar, just grab your knitting, stick it right in there. This is another color that we have. This is a plum, and um, we have different uh, inner and outer fabrics, and they're kind of mix and match. So you know. We will have this gray color with the mustard lining, or we'll have the plum color with the dark green lining. We'll have all different um, combinations. I just brought a few to show you some examples. I like that combo. That mustard's pretty good. Um, and then this is the larger size. So here's the small. This holds basically one ball of yarn for a, a single skein project, either socks or a hat. And this is a medium size, and this would hold two or three balls of yarn. Um, you can see how much larger it is. 
into the inside. And again, it comes with a wrist strap. This one doesn't have the strap on it. Ah, oh, I found the one that was missing a strap. I have the strap for this. Um, so I'll just pop this one on here. And so again, because these bags are lightweight, you know, they still make a nice bag to carry with you um, as you're going around town doing your errands. Um, and one thing I'll mention again is that this, all of the fabrics, the inner fabric, um, which is a, a, I believe they called it a broadcloth, it's like a quilter's fabric, um, the outside, which is a nice twill, and the strap itself are all 100% organic cotton. So if that's important to you, um, I know that organic cotton does not use nearly as many resources in terms of um, water, pesticides, all that stuff um, as non-organic cotton does. So it was important to me to find a, an eco-friendly fabric that would hold up well. And I'm really pleased with this choice. Here's another color, nice for spring. This is, a, this is reading a little bit more sage green on my screen. Um, it's actually quite, kind of a bright grassy green um, or almost lime green for springtime and then it has a darker liner on it and again these will be available in different combos so you might get a green one with a yellow um, border or inner fabric on it so anyway come down to the the booth if you're there at Maryland and check them out if we have any left over I will list these online um, and you can get them there so the next thing I wanted to talk about and I'm very excited is what I'm wearing and this is a new design um, it's a wrap, shawl, big scarf, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the name of the design is going to be Inner Harbor. It's not published just yet, but there is a placeholder page now on Ravelry if you wanted to either add it to your queue um, or, you know, put it in your favorites or something and consider, consider getting the pattern when it comes out. I'm really um, excited to collaborate with Neighborhood Fiber Company on this. This is their yarn. Um, it's the um, merino gradient sets that she sells. Um, I think she calls it the rustic merino. And the reason that she calls it rustic merino, at least this is my theory, I haven't actually asked her, is that it's a little bit thick and thin spun. So if you can see, if you can see that up close. Um, and it is a single. Um, now, I was not 100% sure about this yarn when I ordered it. Um, because I don't often spin or uh, knit things with a singles yarn. It can kind of skew your fabric sometimes. You guys, this is amazing yarn. It's really beautiful. Um, the colors that she gets um, are so saturated. I've never seen like a lighter blue that glows the way that this does. Um, I don't know how she does this. I have some theories about how sort of how she does this, but yeah, I really don't know how she gets these colors so saturated. So the yarn's absolutely amazing. I highly recommend it. Um, and the gradient packs are really fun because they go from quite a light um, shade down to super saturated, almost black. So I think it's gorgeous. Um, I think, you know, because of that color shift, this could go with a lot of different outfits and be a great accessory. And I've made this in kind of a long sail shape. Um, and so you can do a lot with that. It's sort of like a long skinny triangle, but you could wear it as a head wrap. You can wear it as a cowl, sort of a thing, half over your hair, half on your neck. Um, you can wear it as I am. I've got this wrapped around a couple of times to make a nice layered thing. I'm actually gonna stand up and see if you can see this. Oh yeah, and it has tassels. <laughs> so Inner Harbor, um, the name comes from sort of a tribute to the Baltimore Harbor. Um, Neighborhood Fiber Company is in Baltimore. I'm going to turn all the way around so you can see. And um, Carita, the owner of Neighborhood Fiber Company, often names her colorways after neighborhoods. Neighborhood Fiber Company, right? Um, so I thought it would be appropriate. So here's the whole thing. It shifts from dark to light. And the actual pattern is pretty simple. It's a sequence knit, and the pattern will explain exactly how to do this, but essentially it's a knit purl sequence and you just continue it. It breaks over each row, but you just continue counting around 
And what that gives you is a completely reversible fabric. There is no wrong side. So you can't put it on wrong and be embarrassed when you go outside because there is no wrong side. So I really love the texture. It sort of looks like waves. I think you can see that, yeah. So I thought Inner Harbor with the blue and the waves and the sail shape and the tassels, I thought that was just too perfect. So let's see if I can get this back on and styled. Probably not. It took me about 15 minutes to get that on the first time. <laughs> so that'll be good enough. Okay. So this pattern um, will be up just before the festival, a couple days before the festival. I'll uh, make it go live. I'm still waiting on, to, on uh, photography um, so I can publish the pattern. And so the owner of Neighborhood Fiber Company, Karita Collins, does a great job of giving back to her community. And I wanted to um, kind of support that effort that she's made and great example that she set by donating half of the proceeds of the Inner Harbor pattern to the Baltimore Youth Arts Group. And this is a nonprofit organization that works with youth in the Baltimore area and gives them um, exposure and opportunities to work with um, artists and entrepreneurs in the area and to not only explore their own creativity and the artistic kinds of things that they want to learn, whether they want to learn a new craft, a new skill, or you know, take a skill that they they already have or an interest they already have and develop further, but also to see the business side of that and how they could um, perhaps roll that into a career path. Um, so I know that Karita has had the, the youth arts group in her dye studio learning how to dye scarves. Um, I've seen on their website they have art for sale by this by the students and they um, you know they do other kinds of participatory projects so I'm really excited to support that effort. So I hope that inspires you to um, consider getting this pattern um, or if not to maybe make a direct donation to the Baltimore Youth Arts Group. Um, it's a great cause and uh, like I said the yarn um, is sold in gradient packs so you just need one uh, gradient pack of um, the rustic merino singles yarn from neighborhood fiber company um, if you wanted to you could go ahead and get that right now i'll link to her uh, online store in the show notes and um, you know especially if you're not able to make it to the maryland sheep and wool festival you could go ahead and get that now pick out your color um, she's got some great um, colorways there and then uh, yeah the the pattern will be available in just over a week um, from when this video comes out. And if you are going to be at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, you can go pick out your colors in person because uh, Neighborhood Fiber Company will be vending there. I believe they've been there for a number of years. Um, they're in the outside vendors uh, north section. And um, I've seen Karita's display at other events and she always puts an amazing um, you know, storefront uh, at these things and has a huge range of um, different fibers, um, different colors, and different yarn weights. Um, she also has a sock yarn that would be a good pick. She doesn't have it in a gradient set, but you could sort of roll your own um, if you wanted to do that or do an ombre, uh, an ombre um, kind of yarn or something like that. So yeah, definitely check out Neighborhood Fiber Company. Um, of course, I also wanted to point out a couple of other vendors that I think you should visit if you go to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, the first of those is the American Coopworth Registry. Um, I actually got to stay with these ladies at Rhinebeck last year. They let me crash in their Airbnb where they were all staying. Um, so as the name implies, this is a breed association and it's members of that breed association that each bring their own products and they share a booth together. So you will find roving, you'll find yarn, you'll find just the washed locks. Um, Coopworth is a long wool breed and it has a lot of luster. So you can use those locks um, for things like doll making or um, wet felting animals um, or figures, like if you're looking for hair or beards or something like that. Um, and I know one of their members also makes the headbands with the sheep ears. Um, if 
and I've seen those at a number of festivals, people walking around with that. So if, you know, it's a little headband that you wear and then you get sheep ears and a little forelock. Um, <laughs> so if you want to, you know, have fun and, and play dress up. Um, I know little kids like those too. Uh, they feel like they're part of the action. You can get those at the American Coopworth Registry booth. Um, I also wanted to highlight uh, Cooperative Press, Sharon Oki. Helps independent uh, designers and and teachers get their material out there, um, and this is particularly good for folks that are um, maybe less experienced with publishing, or maybe don't have the com confidence to self-publish, or they have a work that is not just a one-off pattern. Um, I myself feel pretty confident in my skills to publish single patterns, but if I wanted to put out a full collection or something more involved, um, something that was maybe more narrative. I would probably want some help with that. So Co Cooperative Press is a great resource if you are if you do have an idea for a craft-related um, book or writing of some kind. Um, but of course, they also have a great selection of independent authors um, at their booth, so you can check out their um, their catalog and buy books from them. Um, next up, I wanted to talk about Strach Fiber Equipment. They are kind of the granddaddy of home fiber arts production and make really beautiful um, handmade tools for fiber artists. So they have hand cards, um, they have drum carters, they have swifts, they have ball winders, um, all of the kinds of things that you need to manipulate your, uh, your fiber, whether you're you know, starting from a fleece and going to a finished yarn um, or maybe you just like to rewind your skeins, um, maybe you're a home dyer, um, or you dye yarn for yourself and you want to measure out different lengths of yarn. Um, really high quality equipment. It is expensive, but it is, it is, like I said, extremely high caliber. Um, so, and they stand behind their, their equipment, they repair their equipment, um, they have videos on how to use everything. So, you know, I feel really comfortable recommending them um, because it's such high quality and it's going to last for a long time. This would be an investment piece um, to add to your tool collection that would last you for, for decades and decades and would even be something that you could pass down in your family. Um, of course, Jill Draper will be there of Jill Draper Makes Stuff. I have uh, glowingly <laughs> um, reviewed her and her beautiful hand-dyed yarns on uh, the channel before, um, but just a reminder, she is in New York, um, in Kingston, near where the Rhinebeck, the New York uh, Sheep and Wool Festival is held every year. And she not only hand dyes yarn, but she designs yarn from scratch. So she chooses the fleeces and the sheep breeds that she wants to work with. She works with the mill to design exactly what kind of yarn that's going to become based on those breed characteristics. And then she dyes the yarn in her studio. Um, so give her give her a check out. I know that um, she's recently had some big name designers um, come out with uh, pattern booklets um, all in her yarn. So I believe she had um, samples of those at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, and I'm hoping that she's going to have um, some more of those samples in her booth at Maryland. And she is also in the main building. Um, she's just across the island down a little further from where we are. Um, so check out Jill. And then the last um, group I wanted to mention was Green Mountain Spinnery. Um, Green Mountain Spinnery is a small mill uh, located down in Putney, Vermont, just south of where we are. And um, they are a cooperatively owned um, fiber producing mill. They produce a woolen spun mill, so it's a light, fluffy kind of yarn. Um, very nice, very warm, um, and very lightweight. So great for sweaters, great for shawls that will kind of um, stick onto you and and be grippy um, and not fall off and uh, and yeah they make amazing yarn most of it's um, U.S. sourced and a lot of it is uh, dyed locally as well and they have a newer yarn at least one newer yarn that I'm excited to check out at the festival because I have some design ideas um, that I've been kind of rattling around in my head for that so again Green Mountain Spinnery um, and I believe they're located outside. Um, you will get, of course, a festival booklet um, when you come in the gate, but you'll, you can also check out 
the vendor list online. There are links to each vendor's website as well as a designation of where you can find them on the, on the grounds. So if there's something that you particularly want um, or you know, some of these um, vendors have limited supply of certain products, so you can make sure you hit them first on Saturday morning before they sell out. Um, I will also say that you know the sheep shows and things like the auction are great to attend, um, even if you're not going to buy a sheep or <laughs> um, a piece of equipment. Those are just fun to kind of check out and see. Maybe you know maybe down the road you're thinking of buying a loom or getting sheep, or you just want to learn more about different breed characteristics so that you can pick out um, wool for a specific project. Um, there is also a fleece sale, so you can get very, very high quality uh, hand spinning fleeces there, very clean um, and very well prepared. And um, yeah, that's all of the fleece sale. So um, have a look online at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Program and um, Kind of, you can kind of strategize if there's certain events um, going on and make sure you don't miss those. Um, I wish I could see more of this festival, um, but of course vending there, um, I basically have to stay with my booth. So I just wanted to invite everybody, um, if you're watching or if you're, you know, if you pay attention to our Instagram feed, um, I know there's a lot of um, names that I keep seeing and I thank you all for the online interaction and I'd love to meet you in person. So come up and introduce yourself and if you know us from YouTube or from Instagram please tell me your online handle too so I can kind of match your your name with your user profile. Um, but yeah we'd love to see you and, and, uh, and get to meet in person. That'd be great. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And tune in next week. We're going to talk about maple sugar season here in Vermont. Cheers.